the design of this bus was extremely intentional. It is meant to be not only a living space, but also an artist's workspace. Every little nook and cranny of space is designated for either something that you need to live or something that you need to create. Hi, I'm Cora Rose. I'm a songwriter. And I'm Jose Luis Vilches. I'm a visual artist. And this is the Art We There Yet bus. This is our studio and tiny home on wheels. Merch, we got merch. I'm gonna keep this very short. We have a very limited supply of shirts available. So if you want one, click the link now in the description and go to floatingorb.earth and order yours now because this is a one-time thing. We got four designs, two t-shirts and two tank tops. The shirts are made out of organically grown bamboo and cotton that are free of pesticides and fertilizers. They are also dyed with 100% natural plant-based dye and they are hand dyed. They are very nice and very comfortable shirts. So if you want one, click the link and go to floatingorb.earth and order yours today because this is a one-time run. So if you want one, order now before they're gone and enjoy today's video. And remember to subscribe. We were actually on the other side of the world in China. That's where Cora and I met. What initially brought us together was our shared passion of travel, and art. We teamed up to eventually create this project, which is Art We There Yet. Art We There Yet is a project to travel Alaska all the way to Argentina across 23 countries, creating art and music inspired by the Americas, while also doing community murals and songwriting workshops, especially in communities that really don't have the funding for those kind of art programs. The design of this bus was extremely intentional. We designed it specifically for our different mediums. Jose Luis being a videographer and a photographer and a painting, we needed to have the space set up so that he could do that work anywhere. Me being a musician and a recording engineer, that meant we needed a recording studio. There's a lot of things that you don't know, and then you quickly realize that it's not as easy as it looks. Everything that we had to do, we had to research it, and we say, okay, today we are going to remove the floor. It's gonna take us five hours. A week later, you're still removing pieces of the floor because you have to figure out everything as you go. It took a whole nine months, three times longer than we thought it would take. We hit the road with $800 in our pocket and a mountain of debt and no idea how we would make it work. We have found that one of the best ways that we can fund not only our work as artists, but the project itself is sponsored murals. That mural will always be free to the recipient. The company or the sponsor or whoever gets really good PR. They get team building for their employees who come out and paint and they get a tax deduction because we're a fiscally sponsored project. It took like building that portfolio and really putting ourselves out there in order for that model to work. All right, so this is Bobby. Bobby is a 2001 Thomas International bus, and he has a DT466E engine. This is one of the engines that can be rebuilt in frame. Mechanics are very knowledgeable and parts are very easy to get access to. So we have this really nice door. Here's where we keep the legs for our couch that turns into a full-size bed. And whenever we need power outside, we also have power outlets here and here. Right here, we have our storage. This was already built in the bus, but when we got this bus, it had a big dent over here, so we kind of had to rebuild the box. Uh, luckily, my uncle and his business partner own a elevators interior company, so they had all the tools to rebuild this box. Essentially, it's mainly uh, painting materials. Right here, we have our little garage. You can see here two solar charge controllers. We started with five solar panels, 100 watts each. And then when we expanded our system, I didn't want to get rid of those five solar panels that I already had. So what I did is install another set of five, which the other charge controller is connected to those panels. And then we had a 3000 watt inverter and 500 amp hours of lithium batteries. We have a generator as well that we use to run the AC. And then we also have a table here that we use for having dinner parties in the front. Here we got our ladder to access the deck. One of the last additions that we have in the bus is actually a Starlink. We love it because we could be in the middle of nowhere, not even cell phone signal, 
but we have internet. The downside of it is that if it's rainy or too cloudy, you can expect the internet to be a little choppy. And also if you're in a huge metropolitan area, people who have a fixed location, they get priority over people that have the account for RV. You can basically use it for a month and you can stop it for as long as you want to. And if you don't like it and you don't need it, you can also sell the equipment to someone else and that person can have an account with Starlink. So, so far we are loving it. This right here is our hatch where we can get access to connect to shore power. And then we have more hatches here. We have two water tanks. We started with one water tank, uh, 40 gallons. And then we quickly realized that wasn't enough. So we had to install another 40 gallon tank. And this one here is if we're going to connect to city water, bypassing the tanks, go straight into our system. And this right here, we have a 12 gallon propane tank. We run our heater, the stove and the fridge with this uh, propane. This tank can last us about a month. Uh, our fridge is an um, absorption fridge that also works with electricity. So we, we have a good sunny day like today and we're producing enough electricity. I, during the day, I actually keep the fridge on electric and then switch it uh, to gas at night. And that extends the amount of days that we can run on propane to about five weeks. All right, now coming in, I'll give you a little tour inside. So this right here is old Cora's work. This is her garden. She's been doing an amazing job keeping these plants alive. This also is our shoe cubby. So when we come in, this is where we put our shoes. And also right here, we have a place to put our keys and flashlights and, and books and, and things like that. So this is the living area and also my working station, my monitor that can be moved in different ways with this arm. So I usually sit right here and I'm able to comfortably work right here. The monitor is hooked up to a laptop right here. This dinette also turns into a couch and a single bed. We can sit four people right there and four people here. And then I can be right here in the kitchen cooking. I think we had had up to 12 people for dinner here in this bus. It gets really cozy, um, but usually we have people that get along pretty well, so there's no problem. <laughs> we have plenty of storage underneath the dinette seat. And then there's two drawers here. These drawers can be emptied for whenever we have artists in residency and they need to put their stuff. Uh, they can sleep right here in this couch, which also turns into a full-size bed. This is our tiny kitchen. We got this four burner stove that also has a little oven in there. And then we have our drawers here with utensils. Um, everything is just in this circle. I can access my knives and plates and everything that I need for cooking. We have our water heater right underneath the sink. It works with propane. Filter water coming through here. It means we don't have to be buying water all the time. We got this fridge used. We got our offer up for a really good deal. And we have this tiny microwave that has been really, really handy. We're not sure if the solar was gonna be enough for it, but we're happy that we got it. This right here is our pantry. We keep um, a lot of grains and some food, also towels and bedding. I have family that work in carpentry. So all I have to do was design the space and then work with my brother, Jairo, who basically built all of this. He's a master carpenter and he did an amazing job. My two other brothers, Freddie and Norland, they work in the finishing department. So they're the one who sanded all this wood and painted and gave it the final finish. So I'm gonna show you the bathroom. So this is our little bathroom space. We have a Nature's Head composting toilet and our little shower, it's a 24 by 24 inch shower pan. It's right at the curve of the bus. If you're super tall, like our Danish friend who came to stay with us, he was kind of a little like this to get it taken a shower, but for little short people like us, it works really well. This was an upgrade that we did that we were really happy we did. Really helpful to not have this feel all cluttered. This is our AC unit. It's a Dometic rooftop AC system for RVs. We can only power it when we're plugged into the generator or shore power. It does just enough to kind of take the edge off but where it really works its magic is in the studio. Now, technically the whole bus is a studio, but in this room, we really kind of pulled out all the stops. It needed to be as soundproofed as possible. It's not completely soundproofed, 
but it gets pretty darn close. Basically what you have here is two half inch sheets of plywood with green glue compound in between, three inches of mineral wool, and then we have a layer of mass loaded vinyl over the windows, which is helping with mass. So these walls are pretty hardcore. On these walls, we completely flipped it. These walls are actually soft. So when I'm recording, this is stopping the sound from bouncing all over the place and messing up the mix. Then the doors are completely sealed so that when I latch all three latches, absolutely no air is coming in. And if there's no air coming in, there's not gonna be a lot of sound coming in. You wouldn't know it, but there are actually 11 different instruments kind of three-dimensionally tetris into this space. We have an accordion, there's a bass guitar under there, there's an electric guitar there, the acoustic, a ukulele, a mandolin, and a small nylon string guitar. And then Jose has a saxophone, a clarinet, and I have a flute up there. Oh, and to keep with the spirit of everything being super multifunctional, my seat when I'm in here in the studio space uh, is also a cajon. Before we got these, I would just have the microphone stands in the space and they would just be like this obstacle course you had to weave yourself through. But then he suggested, why don't you get those cool mic stands that podcasters use? So this is the microphone I use most of the time for vocals. And on this side, I've got one set up for condensers. I can get like a nice stereo image having them like this. It's a really great setup because it doesn't require a lot of energy to be able to start recording a tune. When we have visiting artists come join us, I can take everything down and then this serves as a space where you can do whatever artistic work that you're working on. If you're painting or doing printmaking or uh, fiber arts or whatever you're working on, you have like a good work zone that you can work with. So this is our bed, it's a Murphy bed, folds down. It's a full-size bed and it's super comfy. We each got our own little closet, which we, both of us actually use most of that closet space for instruments. <laughs> and then we were both like, and clothes, you know, clothes go there. And then we each get one of these, which is once again for, supposed to be for clothes, but we both end up just filling it mostly with gear. You can see where our priorities lie. In the studio, we have one of the original safety hatches, emergency hatches for the bus. And Jose created this, this is brilliant. He made this screen so that we can keep the bugs away. And Jose created screens like these for almost all the windows in the front of the bus. In any home hardware store, you can find screen making kits and it's really worth the time that it takes. I think living this way has made me a less fearful person. I remember all the things I was afraid of. It was like, where are we gonna park? What are we gonna do when we break down? After having a major breakdown, and then another major breakdown, and then another major breakdown, you know, it's like you start to learn that yes, things happen, but then it always works out afterwards. It's like you gotta put yourself in the hot water in order to see how it actually does work out. You can't rationalize your way out of fear. You have to like live your way yeah. out of fear.